welcome everyone here today. Bring you greetings from the crusade in Ebony, Abakeleke in Ebony State. We had the most explosive time in God's presence there. And we shall be showing you the clips shortly. This morning, we're in the blessing Sunday service and speaking on the subject, blessed for the top. And this is part two. Blessed for the top. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1, all the way to verse 2. The Bible said, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Three, blessed shall thou be in the city and blessed shall thou be in the field. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. First thing that is our objective this morning is to understand the impact of the blessing. Number two is to understand the way of the blessing. I said in the first service that the blessing it's such a word that many people use. Somebody coughs, bless you. Somebody sneezes, bless you. Until at times, it looks like the impact of the bl word blessing is lost. Now, I said two things at the, in the first service. I said, important thing number one, that a blessing is, just, is beyond just goodwill or well wishes. It's far beyond goodwill and well wishes. Also, I said, that the blessing is a spiritual force with well-defined supernatural effects. Spiritual force with well-defined supernatural effects. I'm going to add one more thing to it in this third second service. And that is the blessing is a divine seal with physical signs. A divine seal. God places a seal upon you. When we say a man is blessed, we are saying the man has been marked. It's a divine seal with physical signs. And in the course of this study, quickly, we shall be looking at the effects or the signs of the blessing. Five of them. It's going to be the same points, different scriptures, and different illustrations. Number one, the blessing gives or brings distinction to the blessed. It gives, it brings distinction to the blessed. In the first service, we looked at Abraham. In this service, we're looking at Joseph. The meaning of this is, the blessing takes the blessed from the pit to the top. That was practically the life of Joseph. From the back to the front. In addition to that, it takes the man from the pit of life to the top. Once upon a time, Joseph was in the pit. The blessing took him to the top. See all that detail in Genesis chapter 44 verse 39. All the way to verse 44. Where Pharaoh made Joseph to be in charge of everything in Egypt. The nation of Israel is a blessed nation. A nation blessed by God. A nation taught by God to bless their own. The priest in Israel blesses the Israelites. The father, the head of the home, blesses his children, blesses his wife. 
as a result of that. Even though Israel is the size of a state in Nigeria. Six million people. Both in landmass. Landmass which is 60% desert. 60. Yet that nation is among the world powers today. 20% of every Nobel Prize winner in the world is, is a Jew. Whether in medicine or in any field. By the blessing of the Lord. If the blessing is upon you, you can't die out. You stand out. Israel would have died out since. Surrounded by hostile nations. They would have died out since. But they stand out by the blessing. I announce to someone here today. By the blessing of the Lord upon your life. You shall stand out. That amen is too paralyzed. If you are saying amen, say it like a believer. If you are saying amen, shout the loudest believer, say amen. Number two, the blessing of the law attracts divine provision. Or supernatural supply to the blessed. It attracts. Bible said the blessed of the Lord make it rich and added no sorrow. It attracts. I said in the first service that blessedness and wretchedness are mutually exclusive. They don't exist together. You cannot be blessed and be wretched at the same time. It attracts. Divine provision and supernatural supply. We looked at Abraham in the first service. Now look at jo Jacob and hear the testimony of Jacob in Genesis chapter 32 and in verse 9 to verse 10. Genesis 32, verse 9. And Jacob said, Oh God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, the Lord will say it unto me, Return. Unto thy country and to thy kindred, and I will deal with thee. I am not worthy of the least of thy mercies, and of all the truth which thou hast showed unto thy servant. When I ran away from Esau, and my father had given me the blessing, all I carried in my hand was one stick with my staff. With my stick, I passed over this Jordan. But see me now. After being processed by the blessing, I have become two troops. All I had before the blessing was a stick. All I had to boast of in the world was a staff. But see how my life multiplied by the blessing. I am here to announce, today is the blessing Sunday. I am here to announce to somebody, whatever you carry in your hands is about to be multiplied by the blessing. Somebody say a loud amen. Whatever you are carrying in your hand is about to be multiplied by the blessing. Somebody in the pit is about to come to the top by the blessing. If you are the one God is speaking to, you will shout the loudest, Amen. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. The blessing attracts divine provision. It attracts supernatural supply to the blessed. Our second example here is the example of Noah. After the earth was destroyed, Noah had to start afresh. There was nothing to start with but the blessing. In Genesis chapter 9 and in verse 1, everything was gone. Animals, vegetation, houses, gone. But God blessed Noah. 
I'm sure you remember in Genesis chapter 8 verse 20. After Noah came out of the ark, he built an altar to the Lord and took off every clean piece of all that were remaining and offered all of them. If, if God said take one, one of each and you are not offering them, then it means you are completely emptying everything. But in verse 9, God dropped something. And God blessed Noah. He said, I know you are starting afresh. I know everything has finished. And I'm speaking to somebody here right now. But you are starting afresh. And God blessed Noah. And God said unto, unto Noah, be fruitful. Noah and his sons. And said unto them, be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish the earth. I wish somebody would say louder, amen. amen. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the earth and upon all that moveth upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea. Into your hands they are delivered. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. Even as the green herb have I given you all things. And Noah continued from there. By the time you read verse 19 of Genesis chapter 9. It says, these are the three sons of Noah. Out of them, the whole earth was overpopulated, overspread. The whole empty earth became repopulated. Repopulated with resources, repopulated with people, repopulated with everything. Because the blessing, makoko the only way you can limit anybody's destiny is to deprive them of the blessing. Ay, 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 ay. The only way you can stop anybody from exploding is don't place the blessing on them. If the blessing is on them, the environment can't stop them. The witchcraft of the land can't stop them. The witches in the land can't stop them. The hostility of the climate cannot stop them. I am here today to announce to somebody, something is coming on you. And I am particularly talking to somebody who appears like you are starting afresh. I see the enemy attacked you and everything you had disappeared. I see there was a conspiracy, whatever it was, that made you to appear like you are starting afresh. Maybe you did a wrong investment and you lost money or you were duped fraudulently. I am announcing to you by the blessing that is coming this morning, you shall explode again. Somebody shout the loudest amen. Shout the loudest amen. Lift your hands and say, I am too blessed. To be bankrupt I am too blessed to be wretched I am too blessed that's another one now there are many stickers coming out of here now too blessed to be stranded too blessed to be wretched too blessed to be bankrupt too blessed to be a pauper too blessed to be a beggar. Masha Tokokaba. Too blessed to be limited. Too blessed to be resisted. Too blessed to be frustrated. Come, just, just say too blessed. Help me tell triple around you. Tell you too blessed, too blessed, too blessed. You are too blessed. Give the Lord the shout of praise as you take your seat. You know the implication of the blessing right now. Number three, the blessing opens up divine revelation and, insp and divine inspiration channels for the blessed. It opens up divine revelation and divine inspiration channels for the blessed. The blessing makes you to see what others can't see. Makes you to hear what others can't hear. The outcome of that is you stand where others can't stand. Hello? I have been seeing this scripture, but I was made to see it differently. Matthew 16, 17. 
When Jesus said, who do men say that I am? Some say you are Elijah. Some say you are this. Some say you are that. And Jesus answered. Now look at verse 16. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. See what Jesus said to him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, by Jonah, for, the word for is because, flesh and blood cannot reveal this to you, but my Father which is in heaven, Another way to say it is Peter only the blessing can make you see this. Blessed are you because flesh and blood can show you this. There are things it takes only the blessing to see. Education can show you. Experience can show you. Ay, 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 ay. There is a dimension, there is something you are carrying that is making you see what others can't see. I said in the first service how Abraham saw the tithe. Nobody saw tithe. Abraham was the first one to pay the tithe. Nobody showed him. He didn't read it from anywhere. The blessing showed him. Hola, hola. <laughs> Blessed are you, Simon Bajuna, for the word for his because flesh and blood. Left for flesh and blood, you couldn't have shown this. You would have been blessed enough for my father in heaven to show you this. It takes the blessing to see some things. To me, the blessing is a form of a mantle. A, a blessing carrier is more like an unction carrier. It's more like a mantle carrier. The blessing is You know, in the Old Testament, the priest Samuel poured oil on Saul. He became king. Samuel poured oil. On David, he was king, he was prophet, he was priest. Nobody poured oil on Abraham, yet God called him prophet. He said, he told Abimelech, let the man pray for you, for he is a prophet. So that you can be healed. What did God pour on him? Blessing. When the blessing is poured on you, depending on your assignment, it can weigh as if it's oil. I announced to someone here today, God is about to take you by the blessing. To see insight and revelation that others have not seen. And you know revelation is the way to elevation. I went up by revelation. Galatians chapter 2 and in verse 2. There are people here today. You are about to go up and it is by revelation. Take your seat. That was revelation. What about inspiration? Jacob. Genesis chapter 30. Verse 37. Jacob took him rods of green poplar. And the hazel and chestnut tree peeled white streaks in them and made the white appear with which was in the rods. And he placed this before the animals. Where did you see it? Who showed you? How did you know that animals watching this? I'm seeing my fire guys sitting right in the front there. Last time when the UK was absolutely on fire. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Jacob saw it. He painted it. His business exploded. 
transferred the flock of Laban by divine inspiration that only the blessing can give. The blessing does not necessarily give you cash. It will bring cash attracting ideas. <laughs> hey! Hey! The blessing may not drop money in your hands physically. The blessing may drop favor that will bring the money. But beyond that, the blessing will drop wisdom that will magnetize wealth. It will drop ideas. Ay, 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 ay. It will drop inspiration that will attract provision. And I don't know whether you know it. As at the last time I checked, 99% of the inventions in the world came out of the Christian anointed minds from the church, from electric bulb to everything. They are the frequency, the gospel, the blessing of God places us at the frequency of inspiration, the frequency of invention. And somebody get ready today. Because in the name that is above every name, the blessing that is about to be declared today is about to usher you into a dimension of ideas, a dimension of inspiration, that will shift your level and shift your destiny. You believe that? Shout the loudest, amen. Number four, the blessing guarantees divine defense and deliverance. Divine defense and deliverance. You see what the Bible said in Isaiah chapter 65 and in verse 8. Isaiah chapter 65 verse 8. It said, Thus saith the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster, and one saith, destroy it not, for a blessing is in it. So will I do for my servant's sake, that I may not destroy them all. Destroy him not, for a blessing is in it. Whatever carries the blessing is not qualified for destruction. Am I speaking to somebody here? I give you two examples of people. Like I said in the first service, the blessing does not defend you. The blessing of God on your life fights your battles. It causes God to fight your battles. It does not only defend you. Active fight. Look at two examples. Jacob in Genesis 31, verse 24. And God came to Laban, the Syrian, in a dream by night. And said unto him, be careful how you speak to Jacob. Don't talk to him either bad or good. That is, I warn you, he's not a normal person. He's not an ordinary person. He's not available for hurt. And in verse 29, look at the confession of Laban. It was in my power. It is in the power of my hand to do you hurt. I plan to harm you. But the God of your father spake unto me yesternight. Hola, hola. There are people God will visit tonight because of you. That amen can be better. There are people God will visit in this season because of you. And anyone who will not leave you alone or leave us alone shall be laid to rest by God. The God of your... J Laban is talking like we talk in Nigeria here. Not yesterday night, oh. yesterday night. Put it again. The God of your father spake unto me when? Yesterday night. It looks like somebody speaking around us here. Yes, tonight. Does it look like somebody from here talking? Yes, tonight. Yes, tonight. Say, take thou heed that you speak not to Jacob, either good or bad. At least if you cannot speak good to him, don't speak bad. Don't speak at all. I, would, I, 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 I plan to do bad, but your God rebuked me. 
That is the defense of the blessing. In, in, in Job chapter 1 verse 9 and 10. Job chapter 1 verse 9 and 10. Job, Satan said to God, Does Job fear God for nothing? Hast thou not made an hedge about him? About his house? About all that he has on every side? See the secret. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands. And his substance is increasing the land. And by this blessing, there is a hedge around him that is not crossable. Somebody say amen. amen. I want to announce to you today, there is an uncrossable hedge around your life. After today, every devil looking for you will come and jam death. Shout the Lord and say amen. Shout the louder believers say amen. Shout amen at the top of your voice. We went to a place for a program. And um, the place where they gave us to say had two rooms. Or, okay, there were two rooms that were meant to stay. One was outside and the other was inside. The inside one was bigger. So she wanted me to stay in the inside one so I can have space and time to pray and study and so on ahead of the meeting. And she will stand, stay in the outer one. The outer one is where uh, is the entrance into the place. So I said, no, that I will do it op opposite way. Let me st stay in the outside one so I can block any devil spiritually or physically. You <laughs> I say it's not correct for you to be the outside. I mean, if somebody is coming or anything, whatever, is you are the first person they will meet. No, no, no. Let me stand there. You remain in the inside. Any devil who comes physically or spiritually. She's, she nodded. She nodded her head. She said, okay. That makes a lot of sense. I said, no, I cannot put you outside and be inside. I am outside. You are inside. That is ordinary man talking. How much more Jehovah? Have you not made a hedge around him so that anything looking for him will jam it first? Hey! 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 I announce to you today in the name that is above every name, Jesus the resurrected Lord, everything looking for you will jam the hedge of the blessing will jam the fire of the blessing if you are saying amen say it like a believer if you are saying amen say it like a believer look at your neighbor say you are too defended to be confronted you are too defended to be defeated. Say it after me. I am too defended. By the blessing of God. To be defeated. By the wickedness of the devil. Louder. I am too defended. By the blessing of God. To be defeated. By the wickedness of the devil. Take your seat in the presence of God. We are not just speaking for the sake of information. We are speaking for the sake of revelation, the sake of conviction, the sake of audacious action, so that you can move about and know that what is called the blessing is on your life and you are not a wasteable chicken. Our brother testified in the first service. His wife delivered in the hospital on Thursday. He went to visit the wife in the hospital. And right in the hospital there, he collapsed. After seeing the wife and the child, he collapsed. Arrow of death. And he became unconscious on the spot. We are now going to Abakeleke. I received a call on the road. From Enugu going towards Abakeleke. I began to scream on the devil. 
Then I called him back. I said, say after me, Jesus. He said, Jesus. I said, say it well. Don't let the devil see your tears. Don't let the devil catch your cry. That was what I was telling him. I was telling him. I was telling him. Say it well. That you are commanding somebody battling with his life. Because they violent take it by force. You are not permitted to be wasted like chicken. He stood there testifying now. If that thing wasn't confronted as aggressively as it was, it would have, would have been talking a different story, God forbid. In the name, they put him on oxygen already. In the name that is above every name, you shall fulfill your days. Can you say amen like a believer? That leads me to point number last. Please take your seat and then we shall be rounding off right now. The blessing. Apart from the divine protection and preservation. The blessing guarantees. Number five. Quality and durability of life for the blessed. It guarantees quality of life. Guarantees durability of life for the blessed. Quality of life and durability of life for the blessed. I'd like you to see this in Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 15. See, I have said before thee this day, life and good and death and evil. Move to verse 19. I have said before thee, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have said before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both you and your seed may live. If you look at that scripture with revelational eyes and the eyes of revelational equation, Life and death. Blessing and cursing. So life equals blessing. Death equals curses. That's, this is the way to say it. Anywhere you find a blessing, you find life. Anywhere you find curses, you find death. Am I communicating? Is that true or not? If only you can access the blessing, you can access life. And if the devil can succeed in imposing on you curses, then he has imposed on you death. But say so you have a choice in the matter. That is why we are here. The blessing travels in the company of life. Curses travel in the company of death. You want to know the best friend of blessing is life. You want to know the best friend of death is curses. Am I communicating? It's life. Anybody cursing you is laying death on you and it is returned back to sender. Anybody blessing you is laying life on you. Every time you hear you are blessed, it's not just a word, it's a release of life. For there the Lord commanded the blessing. Psalm 133 and in verse 3, even life forevermore. The command of the blessing is the release of life. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life. The command of the blessing is the release of life. The declaration of the blessing is the delivery of life. Let me find out how many people understand that when I say you are blessed, it means you shall fulfill your days. So, you are blessed. Let me go to where I think they understand what I'm saying. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed.
blessed. You are blessed. And you are blessed. You are blessed. You are the gallery. You are blessed. Shout the loudest. Amen. Help me tell somebody around you. Tell them you are blessed and you shall live. You are blessed and you shall live. In Nairobi, Kenya, you are blessed. In Douala, Cameroon, you are blessed. In Lusaka, Zambia, you are blessed. All across the UK, you are blessed. In Liberia, in Ghana, hey, Mahashako Baganagala, you are blessed. Everywhere you are connected from around the world, you are blessed. Give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise. Bigger, 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 bigger clap and a louder shout of praise. Bigger, 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 bigger clap and a louder shout of praise. And be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Master. How we are the blessed people living. Isaac was 180 years. Genesis 35, 28 to 29. 180 years he lived. All the days of Isaac were 104 score years. And Isaac gave up the ghost and died. He was gathered to his people, being old and full of days. And his sons and his, his sons, Esau and Jacob, buried him. How, how did Joseph live? Genesis 50 26, 110 years. So Joseph died, being 110 years old. And they embalmed him. And he was put in a coffin. In Egypt. It's an enviable death. The death of the righteous. You will fulfill your days. What is the way of the blessing? Very, very quickly. As our time is literally up. What is the way of the blessing? Again, number one, upright living. Upright living. People that are upright. Upright in life. Upright in dealings are very few. Psalm 1, verse 1, all the way to verse 3. Say, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Blessed. It's not receiving advice from ungodly people. It's not standing in the way of sinners. It's not sitting in the seat of the scornful. His delight is in the law of the Lord. In his law does he meditate day and night. And it's like a tree planted by the rivers of water brings forth its fruit in its season. Its leaf cannot wither whatsoever it does prosper. Psalm 24 verse 4 to 5. Very interesting scripture. Very interesting. He that has clean hands, not corrupt hands, not fraudulent hands, not bribery hands, not cheating hands, not duping hands, and a pure heart. Who has not lifted his soul unto emptiness. Or a liar that swears deceitfully. That man shall receive the blessing from the Lord. You see that? He shall, not another, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord. Clean hands. Pure heart. Not sworn deceitfully. Not lifted his heart to vanity. There is one choice between crookedness and blessedness. If you choose the way of the blessing, you avoid the way of crookedness. And if you have chosen the way of crookedness, you have avoided the way of the blessing. No prayer can make you blessed. Number two is value for the word of God. Value for the word of God. We said, we just saw now in Psalm 1, and in verse 2, his delight shall be in the law of the law. And his law does he meditate day and night. Blessed is that man whose delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law shall he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water. That brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Isaiah chapter 48 verse 17 to 19. He said. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord, thy God, who teach you to profit. I lead you by the way which you should go. Because I taught you, you will prosper. If you hearken to my commandments, your peace will be like a river 
your righteousness will be like the waves of the sea and your seed will be like the sun that is the blessing your offspring also will be like out of your bowels will be like the gravel thereof their name will not be cut off or destroyed from before me that's the blessing if only you hack into my word let me say this when you study this bible it does not give you only give you scripture to quote it does not only make you spiritual it does not only keep you away from wrong it does not only preserve your conscience the word of god blesses your life it puts you in the realm of the blessing that is studying the word, reading the word, establishes you as a blessed man. Whatever is the definition of the blessing can be found in your life. Number three, obedience of God's word. Obedience to God's word. Revelation chapter 1 verse 3, he said, Blessed is he that read it, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein. Actually, we said, obeying God and his word. There is one step between your, your blessing and your position. It is a step of obedience. There is something God is saying in his word or something God is saying by his spirit. This business that is putting your life under pressure, this business that is making you to tell lies. This business that doesn't give you time to go to church. God says, maybe, he said, I have another plan for you. Seek me, let me show you how to divest from here and invest in there. But you want to dry up with a drying brook chariot. When the brook dried, God sent Elijah away. Don't dry with a drying brook. Am I communicating at all? There are people God is saying, that business partner is not your partner. For as long as you call him partner, I can't bless you. But you are sentimental. That employee will close down your business if, if he remains there. But you are sentimental. That location is not your location. Because your location will release to you your allocation. Yet you are not hearing Papa Yedeko said, they got a, a location, a site in Kaduna in those days when they were looking for land. And they have done foundation over 110 columns in the earth. Massive place. When they went there, God said, this is not your place. I have not sent you here. Construction was on. Money spent. He said, I have not sent you here. He said, the moment he heard it, he asked everybody to leave the site. Site closed. Construction ended. The, yes, then they went to stay under the grass cathedral until God brought the Z21 acres that is faith, Garden of Faith today. In Baranawa today. The people asked him, say, what do we do with the land? He said, I don't know. All I know is that God said that is not the place. Should we put a branch there? No. Do we do anything there? Nothing. He said, later on. God told him, if you had moved the ministry there, that would have been the end of the ministry. That is, your story would have ended there. There are many people whose destinies ended. Stepping into what God did not ask them to step into. Stepping into businesses that they have no business with. Stepping into relationships that they have no need for. Many of us, it is messy that, that has kept us still. Because we are doing a lot of trial and error. Move here and move there and step here and step there. I pass here. No way. I pass here. Somebody say a loud amen. I announce to someone here. Any instruction 
that God is giving you, you have not yet heard. I decree, receive it now in the name of Jesus. And every instruction you have heard and you are finding difficult to obey, receive the grace to obey it now in the name of Jesus. Give the Lord the praise and take your seat. We already concluded big lands here and there. We're almost making up our mind to go in that direction. And God said, remember where I showed you in the revelation of the night. That's what brought us here. Those lands are still there. They can be used for anything else. But for this season and for this moment, this is where he sent us to. Somebody say amen. Value for the word, obedience of God's word. Number four is faith in God. To be a man of the blessing, you need rugged faith. Galatians chapter 3 verse 9 said, So then, they which be of faith are blessed. Psalm 27 verse 13, I had fainted unless I have believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I believe to see the goodness of the Lord. And that is called a blessing. If you believe, you must see. Somebody say, say after me, say, I shall see the goodness of the Lord in this land of the living. Say after me, say whether the enemy likes it or not, I must see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Say after me, I cannot die until I have seen the goodness of the Lord. And say, I cannot live without seeing the goodness of the Lord. And I'm seeing it now. Somebody say loud, Amen. Somebody say louder, Amen. That was faith in God. Number five is kingdom service. It shall serve the Lord your God and it shall bless. Luke chapter 12, verse 37. He said, Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Blessed are those servants. Servants must be blessed. The servants of the living God must be blessed. That is why it is a waste of time to envy any genuine servant of God. Don't envy them. It's a waste of envy. That is if the man is real. If the man is real. And serving God with passion and with authenticity. Don't envy them. And if you are real. And serving your God with passion. With authenticity and genuineness. Anybody envying you is wasting their life. Because they haven't seen anything yet. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody say a loud amen. And everybody who is serving God genuinely. And the devil is fighting your blessing. That fight is over right now. If you are saying amen, say it like a believer. If the devil wants the people to know that, to, to feel that you are wasting your time by serving God, by denying you the benefits of service, by the apostolic and prophetic mantle of God, that agenda of the devil is arrested right now. When they see you, behold, this man that passed by us continually is a holy man of God. Let's build for him a chamber. You won't tell people soon. Once you pass, something will tell them that you belong to God and that they must give you a favor. I went for a program one time. And one man met me at the airport. I was coming back. And he said, Pastor, I'm happy to meet you. You're on your way back to Abuja? I said, yes. I've checked in my luggage. He said, please, can they uncheck your luggage? I said, what is that? He said, I just came with my private jet here. And it's flying empty back to Abuja. I want, I want them to carry you. 
I have never met him. They went and unchecked the luggage. You know, airlines hardly, they, they, they frown when you say, bring back my luggage. Because it's like business is leaving them or something. It's like almost like bringing meat out of lion's mouth. They unchecked the luggage, placed me inside the aircraft. And passing through the midst of the others, I went my way. Some people may be seeing me, he's flying private jet. You don't know the story. One crusade, three jets were waiting on us from three different people. In the days of Catherine Kuhlman, people were struggling for them, for her to fly their, their jet. People were queuing. That is, you will use my own for this crusade. Will you use my own for that crusade? And you know, America private jet is like a, it's like car on the road. Am I communicating at all? You shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless. In the days of Maurice Sarulo, one person gave him a jet of $20 million. You shall serve the Lord. And in case you say that is very, very high, I'm talking to you where you are. Just hit the road in soul winning. You remember the testimony of that man in the first service? He was expecting a payment or something. Was this a second service? What did he decide to do? No, no, the first thing he did before he went for evangelism. He prayed, the money didn't come. He went for evangelism. Boom. The same day, a lot started coming. People owing him started paying. Others promised they are going to pay. You shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless. I prophesy to you today as you make up your mind as you are committed into the service of God I announce to you today in the name that is above every name Jesus Christ the resurrected Lord as you are committed in the service of God the blessing that is yours shall look for you say amen like a believer Say a louder believers, amen. amen. Number six, take your seat. I'll be rounding off in a, in a few minutes. Number six is the covenant practice of tithing and giving. The covenant practice of tithing and giving. I will not belabor this. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 and 11. Bring all your tithes into the storehouse. That there may be meat in my house and prove me now here with said the Lord of hosts if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it and I'll rebuke the devourer for your sakes and it shall not destroy the fruit of your ground Exodus 20 24 Exodus 20 24 he said an altar of earth shall you make unto me and shall sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings and thy peace offerings. That is, give your sheep, your oxen. And wherever I record my name, as you give like this, I will come unto thee and I will bless thee. Your giving attracts the blessing. And the most basic giving is called the tithe. I said the story of a man in the first service. And in between the services, he sent me a message. How the explosion, only two years ago, May 2021, he gathered everything he had, according to his story. He said it culminated to $10,000 and planted it as a given. Lord, change my life, change my ministry, change my destiny. By this year, he had... Embarked on a project and spent over one point, maybe six or one point seven million dollars. In between the service, he called me and he sent a message and he said he made a down payment, full payment of six hundred and fifty thousand dollars for the project. The things that should, be, the equipments and so on for the project, paid for ahead of time. Two years ago, it was flat. 
He had to rake everything to gather that amount. And God changed his level. There are people seated here. If Jesus tarries in the next one and a half years or two years, your story shall be told like that. Say amen like a believer. Say a louder believer. Say amen. Finally, value for blessing or mantle carriers. When you value those who carry the blessing, who carry the mantle, the blessing rubs on you. Psalm 133 verse 1 to verse 3 shows us the oil on the head of Aaron translates to the commanded blessing. What is the meaning of that? There is a connection between the oil of the priest and the command of the blessing. The oil on the priest and the command of the blessing. Value the oil and you will lack the blessing. Hosea chapter 12 verse 13 by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. By a prophet was he preserved. Second Chronicles 20, 20a or 20b. Believe the Lord your God so shall you be established. Believe his prophets so shall you prosper. There is a connection. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. The prophet you despise can never bless you. Don't waste your time. The prophet you tolerate, the prophet you criticize, there are people who waste their time in many churches sitting there for donkey years. Pastor is preaching, they are winking their nose. They're looking at you. I've heard that before. <laughs> I was talking with him, a man of God, and he said, God servant Bishop he was saying he's, he's a, a, a big giver that he gives a lot and that prosperity comes, supernatural finances come. You know what the man said? He said, He won't believe that he gives until he has given him. Until he has given him because he is Melchizedek. A tiny man struggling somewhere. He has not recovered. There are people. You can't call somebody your prophet without value. No, you are not talking of worship any man. Or consider any man to be anything other than man. But the fact that somebody carries oil. Value that oil. What we respect is not the person of the king, but the crown on his head. Am I communicating? I am not necessarily after the vessel as much as I am after the virtue inside the vessel. Somebody say amen. Value is translated in many ways. In translated in obedience, is translated in releases. It is value. It's translated into honor. Obey your parents is different from honor. Obey means what they say, do. Honor means show them value. Do things for them that confirm that you value them. Hallelujah. It's a new day for somebody. Because many people mistake obedience and honor. Because God won't repeat it twice. Obey your parents in the Lord. Honor your father and your mother. Does it say obey? Obey. Does it honor, honor? Obey, then honor. Somebody say amen. amen. When a lecturer comes and gives a symposium somewhere, they obey what he said. And the organization may honor him. Am I communicating? And it's not compulsory. And it comes from the heart. But value. Value. One of the things 
that God has helped me with is where I see oil, I value it. Heavy value. One woman got angry. One day said, this pastor, anybody who is anointed is always close to them. He's talking about me because he sees me around Raya Bonke, sees me around WF Kumi, sees me around all of that. And these are people who have affected me one way or the other. So why, why, why? No, no, you, you don't know why. That is why you are where you are and that's why I'm where I am. Stand up on your feet with a shout of praise. A louder shout of praise. Take your seat so that you can stand well. How many blessed people are here today? And who is the most blessed person? Stand with a shout. Hey! 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 It's a new day for you. This blessing is real. Did you see this? One young man said, watch the, our video. You are the God who can never fail. He said, see this man. Doing this thing effortlessly. He said, when he tried it, his knee almost broke. He said, and I am, I am 19 years old. And see the man moving as if it is effortless. Blessing is real. If I don't know anything, I know that the E inside that blessing, B-L-E, that E carries energy. That was what made Abraham at the age of a hundred was giving birth to, to children. After Sarah died at the age of 120, he was still giving birth to children. He climbed the mountain three days. Tied a 19 year old boy as a hundred and something year old man. Fought the army of five nations and beat them. Whoosh. You are too young to be weak the way you are. You are too young to be sleeping like a pregnant woman. Apologies to all pregnant women. Because... Uh, you are double, so we permit you. In those days in Area 1, I say, everybody stand up on, on your feet, except you are pregnant. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But this will translate into practical reality. Can we take a few minutes of prayer? Lift up your hands and thank the Lord for the word you have received this moment. Appreciate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The I am that I am. Worship him. Worship him. Honor him. Adore him. Say after me, say Father. Father. Say it louder. Say Father. Father. Thank you. Thank you for your word, for your word. To, me to me today. Today. I know, Lord, I know, Lord that my life, my life can, never can never remain the same. Be glorified, Be glorified. Oh, Lord, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, lift up your hands everywhere you are and say after me, say, Father, Father I come before you today. I come before you today. To ask for help. To ask for help. In value. In value. For the blessing. For the blessing. And mount to carry us. And mount to carry us. Father. Father. I ask. I ask. For your help. For your help. 
in the practice of the covenant, in the practice of the covenant. Faithfulness, faithfulness and discipline and discipline in the name of jesus in the name of jesus Father, Father, grace, grace to maintain faith, to maintain faith in, God, in God, obedience, obedience in, God's word. in God's word. I receive that grace, I receive that grace. And, value and value for the word. For the word. In, the name of Jesus. in the name of Jesus, grace, grace for, upright for upright living. I receive it now. Receive Open now. your mouth and pray. I receive that grace. <laughs> Jesus, precious name. You believe that, say louder, amen. You believe that, shout the loudest, amen. You're going to pray right now for the man for the for the blessing. Say after me, say Father. Father, I connect. I connect. Just let me hear the voice of the crowd. Just the crowd. Say Father. Louder. Say Father. I connect with your blessing today for distinction for my life. In the name of Jesus. From the pit to the top by the blessing. In the name of Jesus, say, Father, I make demands on divine supply and provision by the blessing. In the name of Jesus, say, Father, I make demands on divine revelation and inspiration by the blessing. In the name of Jesus, say, Father, I make demands on deliverance and defense by your blessing. In the name of Jesus, say, Father, 